live chat for viewers to read. Click any message to pin it. Use options. Got it. Got it. What's up, baby? Dinner. Mm. I think she wants she thinks she she's gonna wait for the compliments to open Christmas for her. Oh brother, so we're gonna eat some lunch and answer some automotive questions. If y'all got questions, I'm here. If y'all just wanna chit chat, I'm also here. I am eating ribeye and broccoli. We're doing that the healthy eating thing. We went and got a uh, family membership at the local college because they got the big gym and the pool and the basketball courts and everything. Um, how long have I seen a 5-4 go before a timing job? Probably about 200,000 miles, 200, 240,000 miles. But that's somebody... That's somebody that was really, really, really taking care of their vehicle, though. Tips and tricks for a blend door actuator on a 2013 F-150. Can you talk about the one that's back behind the radio and stuff? Good luck. <laughs> get some small bit driver, get, get a small bit driver kit and use that. The knee, the knee hurts all the time. No matter what I'm doing, the knee, my knee is constantly hurting. Yeah, it's normal. When you get those cats changed, unless you drive the hell out of it the first day, you're going to smell that smell for a while. It's going to be stuck in there for a while. Um, what do I think about the new 5.0 Dark Horse? I think it looks too much like a Camaro, but I think it's going to absolutely slay any other sports car out there in its class. Shaper's Molly EP with. I mean, so far, the best stuff I've seen is Pennzoil Ultra Platinum and the Valvoline Extended Performance. But we're waiting on our other, uh, talk to you later, Ryan. Good afternoon, two stall. Yeah, it's, no matter what I do with my knee, it, it's constantly hurting me all the time. The doctor says it's not going to go away. He said now would be the time that you may want to think about a career change or going off on your own and working for yourself at your own pace because you are not going to get better. It's just not going to happen. You can lose weight for the pain to get better and be and you can be on it longer before having to do full knee replacement. But unfortunately, the career that you're in, the field that you're in doesn't help in your situation. Can you program the APIM with FDRS instead of OASIS? Yes, that is actually the preferred method now. Ford has released a bulletin stating that if you are doing sync programming or APIM programming, you are supposed to use FDRS because that is the preferred path of pulling information from the network and actually programming all vehicles with sync systems. I don't know too much about the new dark horse. Um, I can see if we can pull up the engine on the computer and we can look over some stuff to see if we can visibly, visually see anything different.
I'm not going to feed you. I already gave you enough treats. Why are you looking at me like that? Ooh, God. How do you get it to stay in neutral on the rack? Dealer doesn't know. What do you mean get it to stay in neutral? It does have a tow, tow haul mode. You can put it in tow haul mode. It's all through the cluster. We're not tow haul. Tow. What do they call it? Tow RV mode or something. I don't know. And there's also a release, a parking um, pull tab release or whatever for it to be a neutral. So I'm not sure how they can't get it to. If a dealer can't figure out how to get their own vehicle in neutral and keep it in neutral, then they don't need to be working on a vehicle. 09 F-150, when I make a hard turn, the traction control light comes on, check your ABS sensors. Check your wires, check your uh, wheel bearing, check all that stuff. On whatever side. See ya, Anthony. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Do they think they fixed the oil consumption issues on the high horsepower 5.0? Well, sure they did. They learned their lesson 18, 19, and 20. Now they ain't got engines to put in them because of that. Do you think they fixed the uh, Are you trying to get it in neutral for a rolling compensation alignment or something? Zolly's is asking. I mean, if you want me to go on the computer real quick, we can log into the computer. We can go through whatever it is that you're asking. I'm just not sure what it is you're asking. About the whole neutral thing, you're not really giving us a lot of context on what the reason is and where to go off of. Explorer ST21 being in service for the reverse sensors, error message twice and still getting the error message once. In, should you be concerned? Well, the problem is it's, it's cold. If you're in a climate where you're already getting snow and they're salting the ground and stuff like that, and it's raining a lot, those sensors are going to be very sensitive to moisture. They're going to be very sensitive to build up on the camera lens. There's going to be a lot of things going on that can trigger that stuff and cause errors and warnings and things of this nature. Also, at the same time, the 2020 and up Explorer have nothing but backup camera issues and 360 camera issues and backup sensor problems. They're, they're riddled with this. So it's not just an easy fix. A lot of them, I've simply just pulled the camera or the connections out in the back cleaned them all out hooked everything back up and then I don't see the customer again do you have to put the jiggle pin on the thermostat in the 12 o'clock position eh, I know a lot of people say you're supposed to I mean, to be safe, to be safe, I don't see, I mean, you could do it, but honestly, I've never really paid attention. I just installed the dang thing. I don't really think it matters, to be honest with you. Um, waiting on this damn doctor to call me back so he can give me this gel shot. So I can go back to work. Not able to. I was going to buy oil off of your Amazon wish list, but I was not certain where to have it delivered. When you go to the wish list and you pick the oil that you want to pay for, it'll automatically pull up in the address section. 
change you have to change the shipping address so click shipping address because you probably used your shipping address for something before click uh, use a different shipping address and it will populate my name right there it'll say rich and then you just click that and it'll have like a little gift emblem or something next to it and it'll say either keep this person's information private or it's public or whatever it is i really don't care but click on my name and it'll just automatically send it to my address yeah they make it very very easy you know it's not rocket science or whatever you just i just bought a I don't know if you know that comedian guy off of TikTok. His name is Justin. He's always doing videos with uh, the lead singer from Rascal Flats. What's his name? Uh, Gary. Um, he just put up a uh, help a help a kid get have Christmas or something like that. And I just bought like. Hundred dollars worth of toys and stuff off of Amazon for the kids that he put up there trying to help out and spread awareness of other children and stuff that may not have Christmas. And uh, I went through the whole uh, wish list buying process, and it was easy. All I had to do was click on the gift, add it to cart, click on the gift, add it to cart, click on the gift, add it to cart, and then when I went to go check out, as long as it's all from the same person. Um, so here's the problem. I picked some gifts on one and I picked some gifts on another and I put them all in my cart and I didn't pay attention to who they were for. So I had to take everything back out of my cart, go back to the wish list, pick one wish list, buy those gifts, check out, click on the person's name, it auto populates, go back into the wish list, pick another person, buy gifts for them, check out, has their address with a little gift symbol next to it, like a couple blue dots next to their name. And uh, it's quite interesting how it's all done. But once you do it, it's it's easy. And then you figure it out once you get in there and go get through your first one. Hey, what's up, Brent Monger? Just having lunch at home. Just got done uh, taking daughter to school, going and signing up at the gym member, or going to get a gym membership at the local college because it's much nicer came home found out that our outlet on our deck was like you could smell it it almost smelled like it was getting hot like something was burnt inside it and it popped the breaker now i seen the moisture was getting back behind it in the connection so i had to run to home depot real quick and get some of those uh what are they called uh gfci or whatever outlets for outdoor and then cut and remount the new hole, new outlets, new everything, rewire everything because it was an external assembly. I put on an internal assembly, so I had to open up the wall a little bit and remount everything inside the wall and then seal everything up so it had a little bit better sealing. And uh, I did the ones with the big covers that cover the, the cords completely instead of just the metal flaps. And uh, now I'm sitting here. I figured it's time to take lunch and talk to you guys for a little bit answer some automotive questions and uh get back on this computer and do do uh get a lot of my ford training done i'm into my electives so i uh finished all my senior senior master stuff at, other than the manual and the automatic tra uh, trans classroom stuff and i finished all of the new requirements for the ev stuff and i'm 100 percent caught up on everything and now i'm into the elective stuff trying to get the elective classes and everything done so i'm more than okay because i figure if i'm going to be at home i may as well be training thoughts on the 7-3 godzilla i mean i like it um but it's just basically a very large LS engine. That's all it is. The same design, same lifters, same rockers, same push rods, same everything. Even down to the exhaust manifolds look identical to exhaust manifolds. They it, they they almost mimic each other. Everything is identical.
One liter? Yeah. Gravy, baby. Let me guess. Oil pump belt, stretch or broke. No oil supply, locked up the engine. Or it sounds like dog shit, one or the other. Typical for a one liter. We do them all the time. And it always has something to do with lack of oil because of that damn belt that drives the oil pump. Wes, how does Ford go through all their testing and screw up the piston liners on the 18 to 25 O's? How did they miss the oil consumption issue? you got to remember, not all of those engines have oil consumption issues. So let's just say 50% of the people out there, 60% of the people out there have that issue, 40% don't. So there's a very high probability that they're not going to be able to pick that up in their initial testing. That's something that may not be seen right away because of... Yeah, there's a high amount of people that have oil consumption, but there's also a decent amount that don't. It was still running? Yeah, we've had a couple of them come in where it's just, they sound like complete dog crap. Like, oil issues, rods knocking and everything else. I ah, put an engine in it. Some of them come in locked up. Does Ford add a break-in additive to the engine oil on the new 22 F-150? My dealership said to do the first oil change at 5,000 miles because of the break-in additive. That is incorrect. If you actually open up your service manual, pull, pull your manual out of your glove box and uh, look at the owner's manual. Sorry, owner's manual. I think you'll see somewhere in there it says something like 1,000 miles or 1,500 miles. That's what we tell people. Bring your vehicle back at a thousand miles and let me change the oil and then we'll get you at every five thousand after that and no more. I know I've asked, but I have a really bad back. My wife changes my seat. My 17 sport. It has no memory seat recall. I want to take the button off of a platinum off eBay, plug it in and see if it works. I don't I don't even know, man. I think you got to have like a driver door module and all that stuff. It's more than just plugging it in. You have to have the driver door module programmed to be able to do that. It's more than just putting a switch in. O six 6 Freestar Cruise 1 Engage thoughts? Um, if you have a... Deactivation switch on the master cylinder. Make sure your connection is good. Uh, at the master cylinder. Make sure there's no corrosion buildup and stuff like that. Also, you need to make sure that your brake pedal. Your switch. Your brake pedal. Uh, sensor switch itself. Like the assembly. It's not old and, and rotten and corroded and cracked. So the lights may turn on. But the cruise control may not see the signal that it needs to see. So you may have to change out that brake switch. And uh, check that deactivation uh, if you have one on the master cylinder. And it could come down to the activation switch itself. It just all depends. But first and foremost, before you get tied up in any of that, make sure the fuse is good. You know, go go to the book that's in it. Go look through your owner's manual and actually pull up the fuses and stuff for that. And actually find the, the fuse that's for cruise control and make sure it's good. Verify it's got power on both legs. Not just the fuses popped. Two eighty five at Delta Sonic, that's good. By the way, the alter alternate alternative number for that five O engines are now on back order. Yeah. After mine showed up, we checked it and then uh we actually got hard confirmation like you did from Hotline saying, yeah, go ahead and get the engine. It is compatible. Um, and then it went on back order. And then two days after my engine showed up for the third one that we were waiting on, the number two engine showed up for the previous one that we were waiting on. So while I'm home waiting for these doctors to do what they're doing and give me this gel injection and everything else in my knee, both my other engines showed up that they had to give to 
another technician to finish and those were gravy jobs uh because uh, obviously i'm not there and the work has to get done so i'm not mad at them for it but it is what it is no michael not 93 octane he's talking about 87. I didn't see that you said that. Um, how do I know? Uh, how do I? How do I think? I, I don't know much about Schaefer, so I can't really tell you. I just know a lot of people think that it's it's really 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 good stuff. They really love it. Your sixteen has a long crank when warm after sitting for an hour. Well, I would think that tune up but if you've already done that maybe that's not it i would also think that how long is a long crank is the check ball in the fuel pump not front seating to keep the line pressure there and then all the line pressure is bleeding off so instead of it cranking up right away it takes three or four times longer because the fuel pump check valve or the check ball inside is not front seating you know, you got you got to be conscious of that too. So the next time you go do your, next time you do, go do your long crank, get in the vehicle, turn the key on, leave it sit for five ten seconds, turn the key back off. Wait a few seconds, turn the key back on, let it prime again. Ten seconds later, start it. If it starts up really quick, you got a fuel pump problem. Would I buy a 1935 Platinum with 19 no recall issues with the motor that I can find except the tailgate issue was fixed? Um, I honestly, oh God, honestly, no, I wouldn't buy a 1935. Me personally, knowing the phaser issue and the rattle that is eventually going to happen that's ahead of you, I wouldn't, but... That's just me personally. You as the consumer, if you really like that truck, they have some extended coverages where they've stepped it out to 69,999 miles for the cam phaser issue on that truck. So you're covered a little bit longer. Yeah, so go out and do the... It's okay, so push button, it doesn't matter. Same thing. I don't know why everybody has a hard time picking that up whenever I say that. Key on is the same thing as turning the push button on. People don't assimilate those two, but they are essentially the same thing. And I, I always think to myself, how is that not, how is that not obvious? <laughs> so not, not, not to cut at you, but it happens to me all the time on the channel when I'm like, okay, to put the vehicle in uh, service mode, turn the key on, push the gas pedal down, push in your parking brake. Turn, turn the key off while still holding. Turn it back on. Continue holding. Okay, now the vehicle's in uh, service mode to change the rear brakes. And then the guy's like, well, I have push button start. How am I supposed to turn my key on? The push button start is your key. You just have to use a little common sense. What I'm saying is turn the key on is the same thing as pushing the button. That's your key. But they don't put the two together. What do you think of the Eco Sport 2.0? I feel 2.0 is a little underpowerful. No, nah, I, I think it's. I think what they did with the Eco Sport and that little two liter, I think that's it's not a bad deal. Um, best engine for Bronco. Wife is thinking about one. Uh, you guys, you guys asked me tough ones today. Uh, best engine for a Bronco. Hmm. I'd probably say the two three, just because we're we're uncertain, you know, on this new two seven. It's with the issues and stuff in the past, and uh, I haven't had really had a lot of issues out of the newer two two threes. It just all depends on what you want, man. If you want the power, go with the two seven. That's the reason why you have a warranty. Cover your ass. See why? Get a warranty by the two seven if you really want to have fun. If you know if you're not really interested in 
really making that thing scream and taking it off road and stuff like that and putting it to use then uh the two three would be fine best engine for the bronco uh i'm only curious about schaefer's as it's been around since like 1890 something well i think schaefer's used to be called something else it eventually turned into schaefer's or it was like one of them there's there's a couple oil companies that have been around just as long as them um but a lot of these oil companies back in the day weren't making engine oil they've been around a long time but they were like making candle wax or detergents or something like that back in the day Two thousand fourteen F one fifty with a three point seven liter slight miss at idle, but not, but no misfire. Any ideas? Uh, you might want to check timing. Make sure your uh, your uh, timing while it's sitting there idling is not too far off. If you really want to know what the timing is supposed to look like, you get an idea. Go look at my video where I put on there three point five liter EcoBoost, or it's like F one fifty sounds like a diesel. I show you the timing pits and what they're supposed to look like what they should assimilate <laughs> yeah she's she's actually laying right here at my feet uh my dog is uh she's sitting around me all the time now now that i'm home she's much happier sometimes my 1.5 fiesta diesel pulls on its own and i'm not touching the gas is this normal a merry christmas from scotland well I don't know those 1.5 liter diesels. We don't have those over here. So I've never really worked on them. So I can't really give you much input on it. I don't even hear anything about those. Honestly, I didn't even know they were available. Any thoughts on the Raptor R and the 5.2 liter motor? Oh, <laughs> I think it's cool. I think it's going to destroy all the other half ton trucks in its class on the special engine platform. Yeah, I think it's going to really rip up all these, these other trucks big time. Um, but that Voodoo engine, that flat plane crank assembly, it's it's kind of rough, man. There's a lot of vibration. Uh, if you guys don't mind, 28 thumbs ups and there's 69 of you. If we could thumb up the video and just kind of help me get the video out there more, spread it a little bit, that would be great. A lot of people forget, they become complacent. I think it's... It's the right thing to do if you like the video. If not, then you don't have to do it. Have you heard of any recall issues about uh, paint flaking on the 16 Explorers? Yeah, they flake all the time. The 16 Explorers are one of the worst vehicles on that. We have customers that come in all the time with any of those Explorers from that era. 15, 16, 17. The paint chipping off the hood, around the fender area, around the end of it. Yeah, that's a common area for them. It, they Something really bad happened at the factory. And the, a lot of the dealers were giving them in-house paint protection uh, insurance policies on the flaking on the hood. But unfortunately, you ain't going to get any kind of coverage um, with it being that old. I don't think there's any kind of coverage that you'll get on that. The only thing you can do is a lot of people don't want to do the work. They'd rather come tell me and ask me what to do. And I wish they would do a little bit more of their own homework sometimes. If you take your VIN, call your local dealer up. Ask to speak to the service department. When you get a service writer on the phone, say yes. I'd like to give you my VIN. Can you see if I have any open recalls or extensions on it? Anything that I may need to bring my vehicle in? I haven't had uh, anything looked at in a while. And I just want to see if there's recalls or anything that need to be done. Because I have a feeling there is. What that does is it prompts them to do a little homework for you. They punch in your VIN. They go check the recalls and stuff. They want to get you in the door. So they can sell you maintenance that needs to be done to the vehicle that you may be neglecting. Now let's say you're the type of person that doesn't have any uh, maintenance issues. They're going to come back and say, yeah, you have a 20 M03 and you have an 18 N03. And you're going to have, the, they have this like lock extension stuff. Are you having any door latch freezing concerns? Are you having any unintended tailgate opening issues? Because you do have some extension programs on that stuff. And, or, or call them up when you're there and say, hey, uh, I wanted to get my vehicle in for any recalls that may be active on the on the on my vehicle. And I also have some paint chipping on the front. Do I have any kind of uh, extended policy that shows up under my VIN that 
protects me and that the paint chipping on this 16 or 17 Explorer, whatever it is, then that leaves the door open for them to actually make money off of you. In all reality, they're not going to make money off of you because you're disinterested in your service campaign stuff. And if it's there, bingo. They think they got you, but really you got them. And the, the upper hand is, is you have the upper hand. 2018 5, 400, 7,000 miles. No issues. Would you add motor coat to routine oil changes for better lube? Uh, not really. I mean, you can. A lot of people like it. I just keep the oil changed more often. You have to understand that, that the oil passages and that oil supply design in that engine is not very good. So about every three oil changes, I'd be dumping something like BG EPR in there, running it through the old oil for about 15 minutes before you change the oil, making sure those passages and stuff are cleaned out as much as possible, and then dumping that out with the, the old oil and putting in like BG MOA and a fresh oil in there with a fresh filter. That's what I'd be doing on that engine. On a scale of 1 to 10, how satisfied are you with your 5.0? 10,000 percent an absolute beast of a truck I, i've had like tahoes pull up next to me and silverados and stuff pull up next to me and 2500s you know with the, the gassers pull up next to me in that truck and i just eat those suckers alive man they, they a lot of them get ticked off and then they try to run you down down the road and then they're like trying to cut you off and stuff like that i'm like man you can't you can't mess with that 5 liter, man. None of the LS, naturally aspirated LSs with no mods, just like mine has no mods. You ain't messing with that Coyote. It's just different. And a lot of people don't understand. And that's not with me being a, a, a fanboy for Ford because I'm not really a Ford fanboy. I love Chevy. I've, I've loved Chevy and I've loved Ford my whole entire life because that's all I've ever had is Chevy and Ford vehicles. But I have a special place in my heart for my 2001 Dodge Ram Sport. I was homeless in that truck. So that's why I dumped so much money in that truck. And everybody asked me, why do you keep putting money in that Magnum engine? Because that truck literally saved my life. Six months of my life, I was homeless living out of that truck. So I'll never get rid of that truck. That's why it's got a brand new transmission, brand new AC, brand new radiator, brand new parts throughout the whole entire truck. Because I love that truck. Is it the best truck I've ever driven? Hell no, it's not. Probably one of the worst trucks I've ever driven. But it's just a reliable truck. Now... When we talk about um, performance, the 2007 GMC Sierra we have, it's a great truck as well. And it really does absolutely fabulous. 150 some thousand miles on it and it's the first year for the AFM and it hasn't messed up on it yet. But I keep the oil changed all the time and I have all the updates done for the oil stuff like the oil hat and the oil pan, the oil pressure regulator. The driver's side valve cover update the new with the bigger PCV baffles and stuff in it. I've done everything that I can to keep that engine going really nice and clean. Put the range deactivation dongle in it. Does it mean that you won't have AFM problems just because you're deactivating the 4 to 8 cylinder switching or 8 to 4? No. You can still have AFM failures because those spring lifter deactivation shit, it's still there. But I keep it shut off so my chances of keeping that truck on the road longer are uh, are much better now when i go from a newer silverado that's traded in or a hd you know 2500 that's traded in from gmc and then i go sit in like a coyote like a brand new 21 22 coyote you go drive that damn thing and it almost feels like it's supercharged or it feels like it's it's like turbocharged or something. When that truck goes to take off naturally aspirated compared to my truck, it's a completely different truck. My 5 liter as it is, it rips pretty bad. The new 21, 22, 5 liter in the F-150, completely different feeling truck. It just feels like as soon as you touch the gas in that damn thing, it's ready to roll, baby. And I don't get that sensation from any of the LSs. I don't get it from the Dodges. I don't get it from... Uh, any of the GM stuff, it's just not there. It's not the same. And I love them all. Everyone smash that like button for Rich. On a 2010 F-150 4x4, can the fuel pump control module shut off the fuel pump if a faulty fuel level sender incorrectly reads uh, empty tank? Okay. Tony, your truck is notorious for the potentiometer's on the fuel pump assembly rotting away 
I literally have a 2008 that I showed you guys that issue in my library where I pulled the fuel pump out of that 5.4 because it was dropping the cluster out. It was dropping the fuel level out. It was causing all kinds of electronic issues. And I was like, man, what the hell is going on with this thing? Why is it doing this? Why is it doing this? And I go talk to one of the other senior techs in the shop and he said, well, Rich, wait a second. Like 2006 to 2010, Ford actually had a bulletin out or they were recommending dumping Chevron Tecron fuel cleaner in the tank because those potentiometers were the sweep, the fuel sender would gum up and it wouldn't read and it would make it think there was no fuel in the truck. It would make it think that all the gauges would get wacky and stuff like that because it wouldn't have a good reading. And then you'd run some of that Chevron Tecron in there, a couple oil changes or a couple fuel tanks and it would start to clean off that varnish buildup and stuff on the fuel sweep. And all of a sudden it'd start working right again. Well, that wasn't the case with this truck. I dropped the tank and I pulled the fuel pump out and I'm looking at it and there was a whole section about a quarter inch to a quarter inch to like a half inch where all the potentiometer resistors were completely gone. They had been eaten away. Dropped a new pump and stuff inside there. Everything worked like it was brand new. Stopped shutting off. The truck stopped dying on its own and stuff like that. The gauges and stuff stopped messing up. Was perfectly fine after that. Never had another issue. Customer said it ran like a rape tape. Fifteen to seventeen best looking modern F one fifties in my opinion. I really do like the way the fifteen to seventeen F one fifties look. To me, they're the best looking F one fifty so far. Uh, I do like the old school OBSs with the BF Goodriches and the 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 level kit, the thirty threes and the the manual hub locks. I I think I'll always really, really, really love those trucks. But the 15 to 17 F-150 is my favorite body style F-150 so far. It's my favorite, most reliable, most simple. Six-speed, five-liter, no real problems. And they didn't have a bunch of lead frame issues like previous models and stuff did. And they just run. And they're so simple to work on. So simple to take care of. 385 horsepower, 383 foot-pounds of torque. Mm -hmm. Nothing too crazy, very, very manageable, and just a great, great truck. And it was some of the first years for the the fact that nobody had to worry about the bodies rotting out anymore. You know, 2015 was the first year for the Aluma bodies. And now you don't see any of those trucks with the wheel wells rotted out, the rockers rotting out of them, none of that stuff going on. And then you protect it even further, and they last literally, we have them come in the dealership two, 300,000 miles on them. Two thousand fourteen Forge Edge is the rear diff fluid serviceable. If so, is it vacuumed out or drain plug? Well, I'll show you right now. Give me a second. All I've been doing is just freaking training the last couple days, man. Non stop train, 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 train. I'm doing a 10R140 refresher right now. It's not required, but I want to go back over the 10R140 again just to make sure that I didn't miss anything from before. And it's an elective that gives you some credentials towards uh, completing training. So even though I know pretty much everything about it, for the most part, uh, I want to go back and refresh it. Let's see here. You said 2014. Let me go back and refresh the screen real quick. 2014 Ford Edge. Let's not talk about it. Let's be about it, right? I want to say it's a suction service. Do they call it the RDU in this thing? Differential. Rear drive axle. 20502. Section 20502. So let's go over here to section 205. Drive line. 
chassis drive line O2 and then we go to removal and installation no in vehicle repair no Pinion seal, sub shaft seal. Let's look at uh let's just go to description and operation. Rear axle differential assembly. Tool five zero zero driveline systems. General procedures. Maybe I could click on something like the differential pinion seal. Hmm. Rear drive axle differential specifications. Silicone TA32. ADW. Says SAE ADW90 premium axle lubricant. Differential housing cover. Oh, it says right on it. Yeah, it says there's a plug right on the back cover. It shows it's hidden by the cross member. It says there's a vent. And there's a series of bolts all the way around. And it shows uh, the plug comes right out of it. Yeah, it shows you can suck the fluid right out of it. And then put the fluid right back in. Or you can snake like a ratcheting wrench in there. And you can pull the rear cover off. Let me show you real quick. And there's the plug. No, oh, I didn't know this was that greasy. Yeah, so it says it's serviceable. Um, Jason said, "Hi, Rich. It's an honor finally to finally get in to make one of your live streams. I appreciate you, sir, and you have helped me a lot. I appreciate that, man. There was a, a lady that reached out to me yesterday, and she said, you know, I've uh, I lost my husband a few years ago, and I didn't want to put it on the community chat because it's very, very personal. And you could tell it kind of hurt this lady. She said, I lost my husband a few years ago and I've been stuck in this. Uh, he did everything while we were alive. He fixed the house. He fixed the cars. He did everything. But I, I've i been uh, penny pinching, trying to make everything, you know, on my own with my little retirement and stuff. And I've been doing everything that I can. And I looked through uh, the Internet to find ways and learn how to do things to kind of live, live and follow through with his legacy that he that he left behind and that's the kind of person he was he tried to figure out how to do everything on his own instead of having somebody else do it for him and she said uh your channel has helped me out a lot not only with just like in life in, in general I, I think of you almost as a son and um you remind me a lot of him and she said that I've learned stuff about the house and cars and everything else and she said I really appreciate you um just wanted to tell you that and I was like wow and it's crazy. <laughs> and make you, make you people say stuff like that to me all the time. And it's, I got I got people on here that are like, uh, the wife will watch sometimes, and when she's not watching, and husband catches me, he'll watch, and they share the phone with each other, and 
they'll put it up on the big screen and the son will come in and he'll watch it with me and uh, have a another father son uh, single father with his son and he, he wants his son to learn about how to do automotive stuff and everything else and they'll watch my videos before they go to bed at night his son will ask about me can we watch the Ford boss guy and he calls me the <laughs> the yellow beard guy <laughs> the Ford boss yellow beard guy and uh, they'll jump on and they'll watch for a while and um, I told him I said I apologize for my mouth sometimes but you know it's kind of just how I am I do select that my videos not for children but I do try to I've tried to clean it up a lot lately I may slip from time to time but I can't always promise that and he said you know I've had the conversation with him and I let him know that you're a grown man and that you're gonna say some words that sometimes kids can't say and you're smart and you you know what what you can say what you can't say and just because you hear him say it in a video doesn't mean you should say it the point is I want you to learn about this stuff and he puts his son in front of the TV and they sit down and they learn about it uh, I did go to the dealer and try to talk to them about the flaking, but they made it seem like they'd never seen it before, but they wanted to fix other issues I have with it. I appreciate what you do. I, I appreciate you, Matthew. Thank you for being here. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to find some crappy dealers that, are, dealers that are like that. They just don't want to own up to um, what Ford's issues are. So since you already tried, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to extend a little bit of an olive branch to you here. Since you've already tried and they didn't really want to help you, what I would suggest that you do is you get a hold of Ford Corporate and you talk to the CRC team as their customer relations team and let them know what you're going through. They are very aware of this issue with the hoods and the paint flaking with the paint on those ears. They may say, you know what, take it to whatever body shop you want. Let us know what it's going to cost and we may take care. We'll, we'll try to help you out, at least pay 50% of it or 75% or maybe even all of it to get it repainted again. They often do that a lot. They, the Ford corporate CRC department really helps a lot of the customers out. If you own a new 6.7, what oil would you buy for it? I, Hot Shot Secret. Hot Shot Secrets. Go on their website. You're going to find different versions. Remember, remember, you pay for what you get. And run their uh, uh, everyday fuel treatment. Uh, their EDT. Run that in the fuel keep that high pressure fuel pump lubricated um only thing i hate about my 2011 is them rocker panels yeah you're right you're right your veterans day video saved my life i needed it at the time if you want to talk to me more off the horn jason i i would uh i would love to hear more about what you were going through if you want to if you want to talk I'd be more than willing to talk to you about it if you just need to reach out to me at some point message me on one of my other videos and ask for my email and I'll give it to you and if you ever need anything at all you just reach out to me you you, you call me you talk to me I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning or you know ten o'clock at night I'm going to bed just reach out to me do I watch Cletus McFarlane? I do watch Cletus McFarlane. I do know what's going on right now with the Freedom Factory. and um, I'm a little mixed on everything. Um, I do believe that uh, power sports, motorsports should continue on. I believe what they're doing by building that housing area right around his racetrack is wrong. I don't think they should be doing that. But there's also a part of what the city commissioner or council or whatever for each one of the districts are saying that they're going to try to do whatever they can to protect his racetrack as well to make sure it doesn't go anywhere because they do realize how much money that racetrack actually brings to the community, the town. It's good for the people and stuff. So I'm hoping that Cletus gets a lot of help from these zone commissioners or these, these people that are in charge of each one of these districts to keep the Freedom Factory alive. Um, it may or may not be a benefit to him he doesn't know yet how it's all going to play out statistically it would hurt him more than it would help him but they also did talk to the development manager or something like that and said what if what we did closest to the freedom factory the racetrack is we built an area for people that were going to be moving in there that was like racetrack corner or something like that like they loved hearing the sounds and the noises and that's their kind of thing 
you know, the families that would be closest to it are the families that would be more interested in being a part of that atmosphere. So it's pretty cool that they're at least attempting and entertaining ideas on how to make it better for him. Any experience with 2000's Ford Escape and Mazda Tributes rusting out in the back? They don't just rust out in the back. They rust out the entire vehicle. It's not just the back on those. The subframes ride out on them. The rear end, the, uh, the rear uh, subframe assembly rots out on them. The whole entire vehicle is... The Ford did not treat those vehicles correctly with uh, that, that corrosion uh, paint base or whatever that they normally spray on those. So... All those vehicles that are like that, they all rot out. Subframes literally snap. Lower control arms literally pull right out of the subframes. I've talked about the 7.3 already. Um, it's just a larger LS. We've had a few issues right at about thirty-five to 40,000 miles. The lifters turn in the board. Plastic lifter uh, cups, same LS type design, same shitty issue where the lifter and camshafts start delam delaminating and stuff the bearings are too small the needle bearings are too small for the roller uh, just great design makes good power plenty of truck for whatever you need but faulty ls type components i say ls but it's not an ls type component it's just a general lifter push rod assembly that m most engines would use that run that type of application um you know if you look at the history of the ls and the cathedral port design and stuff like that a lot of people f say that well you can thank gm for that design you could thank you know general or you know chevy for that design but that cathedral port type design had been running in what was it, like the 427 or 428 fe or whatever it was called back in the day that design wasn't their design. That design was run before GM even started running that design. Ford ran that in their big blocks back in the day with the Cathedral Port. I don't know what it was, a 427 or 428. I think they didn't they call it like the FE engine. It was the Cathedral Port, same type of rocker, same type of push rod setup. That it was out way before GM ever even used that. Would I ever use Walmart SuperTech? Oh, of course. Wanting to change over to yellow. And it freeze. Will it hurt if you get a little orange? No, it says it's backwards compatible. It says you can go back. You you can you can take the VC thirteen DLG or DO, and you can dump it in the old orange stuff to top it off, and you can mix it. But they don't want you taking that Dex cool and, and dumping it in the VC13 stuff. You can go backwards, but you can't go forward. So, no orange in the yellow. Yes, orange. Or, yes, yellow in the orange. BG Fluids Ultra Guard LS75W90 says, Friction modifier not needed in the 15 Mustang GT. Everything I've read from Ford says different thoughts. Well, the, the rule of thumb is if you're running a, if you are running a, uh, some kind of differential lock or clutch type system in that rear end, if it's a limited slip differential and it's got a clutch type design or something to it, you don't need the friction modifiers. What they're saying are the electronic clutch in the F-150s and stuff like that. You don't need the friction modifier in it. But if it's an open differential with just an electronic locking assembly, no. I take that back. If it's an open differential with an electronic locking clutch, they don't want friction modifier in that. But if it's just a regular open differential, they do want friction modifier in it to help with the noise and stuff. Uh, let me try to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to talk out loud. Uh, and you know, most of the time, that friction modifier doesn't do anything to those rear ends anyway. Even when it says it does or it doesn't, or electronic locking clutch, don't put the friction modifier in those systems. It it doesn't really mess with it. Let's let's look yours up real quick. Fifteen Mustang GT. <laughs> Fifteen.
last time. If I had the VIN, I could click on it and it would give me specs directly on the top of the page. Oh, uh, let's see. Driveline. Rear drive axle differential specifications. 7585 premium synthetic high point gear lubricant. Without the cooler package, 3.15 to 3.30 pints, or 1.49 to 1.56 liters. With the cooler package, 3.93 to 4.08 pints, 1.858 to 1.929 liters. And then it says, material... Motocraft Additive Friction Modifier XL3. So it says you do need to put it in here. Uh, general Procedures. Let's see what it says here. Draining and Filling. It says you need the friction modifier and the 75W85. So it says it does need friction modifier. It says pull the lower drain. It says you can pop the fitting off that has the, disc, disc, the quick disconnect line if you have the cooler pack. Or it has an upper fitting in it. Either way. And... It says after you drain everything... It says fill the differential with 1.50 liters or 3.18 pints of clean differential gear lubricant. 7585 premium synthetic high point gear lubricant. After you have dumped that much in there, it says then take a 4.0 ounce can of clean friction modifier XL3 and dump that in as well. Install the differential fill plug. The differential gear lubricant level should be within 9 millimeters from the fluid level fill plug opening. If equipped with a differential cooler, operate the differential cooler pump with the scan tool for 2 minutes and top off the differential fluid again. 7585 gear lubricant. So it says you do need a friction modifier. What transmission does an 07 E450 with a V10 have? Uh, let's see here. Let's see what options were available. Is that the 100? Uh, 07. E450. I'm assuming it's got what the 6.8 liter in it, or does it have the six? What engines in that? Let me set this down for a second. Oh, I went to F450. I needed E. Fifty. I'm going to have to scroll to the end of the comments because I don't know how far down I am. Probably way behind. I ain't going to be able to get to everybody. You might have to ask your question more than once. So, uh, automatic transmission. Said the E450 had an option of... 
4R70E, 4R75, and then the heavier duty one would have had the torque shift transmission. So an E450, chances are you have the torque shift transmission. 4R70E would have been in like the E150, 250, some of the 250s, 350s got the 4R75E, and then the 450 would have had the torque shift. So, torque shift. Phone a friend. Ford paid for my Mustang hood to be repainted a year later. It was peeling again. I do run Hot Shot Secret. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. You're confusing me now. Ask your ask the question all in the same question. Because I'm ready to move on to the next person. And now I got... Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says... Um, Mercon SP is the fluid for it. It says the transmission holds 19.2 cords. And transmission fluid should be changed every 30,000 miles regardless of normal or special operating conditions. It says OE, let's see, fluid filter... Remote filter element 7B155. Silicone breeze multi-purpose grease threadlock TA25. Yeah, my time SP. Hope that helps. Oh, uh, I do run hot shot secret EDT in my fuel. Wasn't sure they made oil. Was considering Schaefer's 9000. Uh yeah, Schaefer's makes good stuff, man. Uh, you could try either one, but I would say uh, if it was me, Hot Shot Secrets is what we really have the Super Duty guys going after. It seems to do very, very good for us. I appreciate that, Gunner. Hi, Rich. Dealer offered me to buy back my truck, and it's a 2017 F-150 Lariat Special Edition, fully loaded, 8,000 miles on it. I didn't drive much. They offered thirty-five thousand for it. Is it a good price? A seventeen F one hundred and fifty Lariat or Lariat Special Edition, fully loaded with eight thousand miles on it. Thirty-five. Is it a good price? No. Not in today's market. Eh, wait a second. Let me, let me, this is a timeout, timeout, timeout. Hmm. So they're going to turn around and probably sell that truck for like 41, 42. Hmm. For a dealer to offer that much, I would say yes. Let me I take that back. I would say yes. Mm. I would try to push them for like 37, 38. But 35, for what I'm seeing right now in the market, yes. That is, that is not a bad price. We're in 22, 5 years, 8,000 miles. I can get like a a base model 5 liter or a base model new F150 with four wheel drive and a 33 for like 40 45 46 if I'm 47 somewhere in there with upgraded interior and stuff like that are a little bit nicer just without the bigger engine I'd say 35 for a 17 with 8000 miles I would have to take it but I'd try to haggle with them and try to get another a little bit more out of it Five liter, yeah, yeah. You were, uh, you got, you got. Why would you even get rid of that truck? My God, I'd never get rid of that truck. No. <laughs> I 
Uh, it all depends. So um, that's a good question, uh, Red Shelby. That's a that's a very good question. Diesel oil has to have a higher calcium level. This is something that Bob said he learned he learned from me not too long ago. Diesel oil has to have a higher calcium level because it needs to disperse the ash material and stuff that builds up in the oil. That same at the the same it's it's a dispersant, it's a detergent, it helps keep everything clean. So where you you might see a calcium level in a gasoline oil at like uh let's just say 900 to 1200 parts per million a diesel might have something like 2000 or 1800 or something like that and we run into these issues called low speed pre-ignition and excessive amounts of calcium in the oil when you are burning a little bit of oil or it's getting into areas where it shouldn't be can actually increase low speed pre-ignition that oil is supposed to be helping with the low speed pre-ignition stuff not adding to it so if you use diesel oil on a gasoline application you could increase certain areas where you need to be careful in you might create a problem with a little bit more knock a little bit more noise in certain areas because of that low speed pre-ignition it could eventually cause some issues internally if your engine is susceptible to burning oil I'd like to see them lower the calcium levels in the oil and increase the magnesium level so then it counteracts and does the same thing because magnesium doesn't seem to cause an issue with low speed pre-ignition. So you can run a diesel oil, but you got to be careful. If it's a little bit of a burner, you could create a little bit of knock, a little pre-ignition at low speed. There could be some issues there. So you got to watch out for that. Currently repainting a 93 F350 OBS will be replacing the faded lights. Have you ever heard of LED taillights causing issues with older E4OD transmissions? Read a lot online about this. No, I haven't. Honestly, I don't know very much about a lot of the older stuff when it comes to that because I don't see it enough. Just wanted to say thank you and Merry Christmas to you and your family. I appreciate you. God bless. Merry Christmas. 13 F-150, 72,000 miles. You can feel a grinding or low on fluid sound. You can feel it while driving. Any ideas? Uh, can you put it in... Have you tried putting it in four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive and see what's... If, it's, if it sounds better in four-wheel drive than two-wheel drive, you have a hub actuator problem, integrated wheel end problem. I'd put it in four-wheel drive and see if the sound goes away and then hit me back. Why are we putting the Ukraine flag up in my comment section? I'm not. That ain't me, bruh. <laughs> Oh, you're from Ukraine. Well, then, then I support you if you're from Ukraine. But I said I don't want to start that political stuff here in the comment section. I just ain't going to work with me. Hello from Ukraine, then. P20, P219B and P219A, F150 5.0. What do those codes mean? Are you going to make me look them up or are you going to tell me what they mean? I don't have every single code memorized in this noggin up here. I like when you guys tell me what they mean so I don't have to do the extra work because I'm already doing enough helping. Who is Bob? He's one of the moderators on the channel. He's my, he's, he was the, the first, like my brother. So Bob is, uh, he helps me keep the channel up and running. He does a lot of work here to keep a lot of the idiots out of the comment section and uh, helps kind of direct and guide things uh, whenever I can't stay on top of everything and I'm answering questions. He's typically taking care of the dirty work. Him and Anthony and uh, uh, Pups and everybody else, they they help me run the channel. That wrench means that he is a moderator. Oh, well, Uncle Fashion. 16 Ford Explorer. The 3.5 twin turbo eco boost when it shifts from first to second and second to third it makes a grinding noise and then stops the back tires for a second oh i don't know <laughs> i don't know about none of that man 
stop the back tires for a second. Sounds like you need to get it into a shop and have that trans looked at or that rear end looked at. Is it required to remove the front bumper cover to replace the horns on the 1950 XB? Oh, I'm sure it is. So you gotta pull all that stuff out of the way. So why did my 19 Expedition shift hard only when going in into and out of fifth gear? Um, 10 speed transmission. I don't have an answer for that, and neither does Ford. Adaptive learn needs to be reset. Valve body needs to be cleaned out and gone through. And if it's still doing it, then you're going to have to have the trans tore apart and figure out what's going on. It's a 10-speed transmission, man. You guys should be expecting this stuff by now. No, it's not okay. No, I'm not making excuses for them. But that's what happens when you buy a 10-speed transmission. You, you don't need more than six speeds. Six-speed transmission was more than sufficient, and everybody wanted to try to reinvent the wheel, and they want more and faster and more fuel economy. Well, you want it, you ask for it, this is what you got. 2013 Ford Fusion 1.6 liter EcoBoost, 133,000 miles of stoplight. The car shakes bad, yeah. vibrates the door panels, make them rattle. Any ideas? Has new plugs and coils? Yeah, check your motor mounts. Check your trans mount. Sam Thomas, no, leave the bracket bolted on, just remove the horns. I don't know what you guys are talking about. What do you mean horns? Are you talking about the frame horns that the bumper and everything mounts to? Then you're going to have to take all that stuff out of the way. Or are you talking about the hooks that stick out of the front? I have no idea what these guys are talking about. Try Google and too many money grabbers to get an easy answer. So by chance, do you know what transmission... Code E is on a 2003 F250. Yeah. Let's just look. Let's see what the options are. So we ain't got to guess. No, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Oh, let's see. go back to the drawing board. I was comfy. Let's see here. Automatic transmission. Uh, said there was only two transmissions available. It was a 4R100 and a torque shift. So, you got to try to figure out which one you got. 4R100 or a torque shift. Now, let's see here. Uh, general description and operation. Identification tags. An, identifica an identification tag is located on the left side of the transmission, rearward of the transmission. Range digital sensor, a range digital TR sensor. Number one is the assembly plant and prefix, suffix. Number two is the transmission model. Number three is the serial number. And number four is the build date and year. Let me show you what they're talking about right, right here. This is for the 4R100. Let's see if we can find out. Just 
specifications. Let's go here. In vehicle repair. This is the 4R100, kind of belly pan looks like that. Torque converter drain up there in the front. Now let's look at the other one. Torque shift. In vehicle repair. Fluid pan gasket filter. All right, and then here's the torque shift. See, it looks different. The pan is a different shape. The plug's in a different location too. And this was the 4R100. So you can get to the horns without removing the front bumper cover. If so, Ford dealer lied to me. What are you talking about with the horn stuff? Like uh, when I'm working on a transit, the front frame horns, I can unbolt them from the rear section where the subframe's at and it goes back behind the bumper and there's a plate there with some bolts that go through it. But as far as I'm concerned, an expedition's not the same way. But I don't know that for sure. And they may have wanted to do that just for just for cleanliness of the job. So you can't if they're if they're following the shop manuals to do what they have to do to get the job done, you can't. They didn't lie to you. They're doing what they were supposed to do. They told you what they were supposed to tell you. 2018 F-150 XLT 2.7 liter EcoBoost about to hit 80,000. What services would you recommend? Um, Johnny, I don't know if you're new here or not, but I've already I beat this into the ground, man. I beat this like a damn dead horse already. I'm so tired of going over fluid maintenance and service intervals over and over and over and over and over again 80,000 miles you should be servicing the trans changing the filter inside the trans servicing the rear diff the front diff the transfer case the coolant uh if you haven't changed the plugs and stuff out yet you need to get the plugs out of that engine as well and change the plugs cabin air filter Yeah, Chevron Tecron fuel treatment's not bad. It's good. I like Marble Mystery Oil better than any of them, to be honest with you. It won't complete the updates? It's common. Thank you for the video on techs getting harder work than other tech workers and many times less pay it. IT computer industry here, and it's the same for us. Chevron is good, same modern... Same with Marvel Miss Rule. What's up, Chief Roller? Can you turn off auto start stuff on 18 Ford Escape? I'm sure you can. 
go jump on the Forscan forums, F O R S C A N, and chat with those guys. Oh, horns to go beep beep. Are you talking about that? I'm talking about frame horns. Sorry, I'm a little behind in that comment section. That is, that is funny. That is hilarious. Uh, to remove the front. So no, you don't have to. Let's let's get back to that. Um, I found some ways of doing it without having to remove the whole front cover. What I'll do is I'll take the clips off the entire front section, the upper plastic piece. And then I can pull the plastic up enough sometimes to fit my big old arms back in there and get to the bolt. And I'll use a ratcheting wrench to pull it off. But the book says to remove the front bumper cover. So regardless if you think they lied to you or not, no, you don't have to remove the whole entire front bumper cover. But the book does tell them to do that. And that's the safest way to do it without having to worry about breaking something. So they did the right thing by telling you that. So don't be mad. Uncle Daddy, 13F150, limited eco boost, driver side turbo whistle, loud, and rattle on startup, even when I hold the gas pedal down to prime the oil system. Well, it sounds like you got linkage that's wore out or a wastegate that's wore out. Sounds like that turbo is going to need to be replaced soon. Oh, that fridge was at uh, Home Depot. Um, so guys, we've been out here for an hour and 22 minutes to try to cut a little bit short today. Um, I'm going to call my boss. I just noticed my service manager called me while we were on here. I don't know if he's got some kind of update on the medical stuff or what it is, but, uh, I need to talk to him, figure out what he wants and then we'll go from there. That's all I got for y'all. A little help today, answering a bunch of questions or whatever. If you all got anything else you want to reach out to me, uh, let me know. I am getting off of here. Yeah, Bearded Ford Tech. If you if you haven't checked out Bearded Ford Tech on here, um Anthony, go go subscribe. Go check out Bearded Ford Tech. He sent he sent me this for Christmas. Yeah. And uh he sent me some snap on uh male extractors instead of like the Irwin style, it's the male one. And I sent him a set of Nipix uh pliers small and large or small and medium ones so that's it guys i'm uh I'm taking off catch y'all later be blessed merry christmas happy holidays to you